I have decided to get back into YouTube. Last summer I did a vlog. This time I'm going to switch it up completely. I'm going to do a sports show. I don't have a name for it yet. We'll get there eventually, but let's just get right into it. The NFL draft is at the end of April, and the Cleveland Browns selected Miles Garrett with the first overall pick, despite him asking the Dallas Cowboys to trade up and take him first overall so he could stay in Texas and not be drafted by the Browns. The Browns drafted him, and I completely understand the guy is going to be an absolute force on the defensive end. The Cleveland Browns also selected Jabril Peppers 25th overall. The guy is an absolute athlete. He can ball on both sides, offense and defense. And head coach Hugh Jackson has said he's going to utilize the safety on the offensive side of the ball. I'm interested to see what they do with Jabril Peppers. He is a little questionable on deep coverage, but I think he's going to work out for him. Like I said, the guy's an athlete. Four picks after Peppers, the Browns took David Joku with a 29th overall pick. The guy's a bit of a raw specimen. He's going to be a beast. Eventually, I think it's going to take him a year or two to get his footing in the NFL, but once he's there, he's going to be an unreal tight end. 52nd overall, the Browns took Deshaun Kaiser, the QB out of Notre Dame. Solid pick. The guy's got an NFL-ready body, decent arm. He's good on his feet. I'm excited to see how these four rookies perform with the Browns next year. The Chicago Bears traded up from the third overall pick to the second overall pick to draft Mitch Trubisky, the QB out of North Carolina. I'm a little bit surprised by this because Chicago's decided to pay Mike Lennon $45 billion over the next three years, and it seems like they locked in on him as their starting quarterback. But then they go out and draft Trubisky, and they didn't even inform Mike Lennon they were doing this. Trubisky had no idea. It was kind of, seems like it was an impulse last-second decision by the Browns. I don't know if it's going to pay off. It's going to be really interesting to see what they do with these two QBs in the future. With the fourth overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars took Leonard Fournette, and eighth overall, Carolina took Christian McCaffrey. These are two guys I'm excited to see play. They're absolute studs, both of them. McCaffrey's dynamic. He can run and catch. Fournette can just run through you. I'm going to be interested. Jacksonville doesn't have the best offensive line, so I'm going to be interested to see how Fournette does at the pro level. But McCaffrey, I'm excited. He's got a decent quarterback in Cam Newton. I'm really excited to see both these guys play. At 10th overall, the Kansas City Chiefs selected Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is an interesting guy. He was offered $1 million professional baseball contract out of high school. He turned it down and elected to go play football instead, and it's paid off. He just got drafted 10th overall. He's been compared to the likes of Brett Favre. Both guys have huge arms. Mahomes can throw 50 yards in the air on his knees. Both guys, however, they like to take some risks. They're known to throw in picks. But the guy that drafted Patrick Mahomes 10th overall is Andy Reid. Andy Reid also happened to draft and groom Brett Favre into the quarterback he's known for today. So I'm interested to see what Andy Reid does with Patrick Mahomes. Of course, one thing to note with Patrick Mahomes is he's not going to have an impact right away. He's starting behind Alex Smith, so he's going to get some good experience from playing behind Alex Smith, and he's also going to be groomed by Andy Reid. He's going to have an impact, I think. It's not going to be right away. It's going to take him a couple of years, but watch out for this kid down the road. Deshaun Watson fell to 12th overall in the draft, and a lot of people saw this as a negative. However, it's a positive, especially for Deshaun Watson. He's going to a good team with a good defense. He's got great weapons on offense. He's got an offensive mind head coach. It's a great team. They can make a push for the postseason right away with him there. We're going to move from one football to another now. On Friday, Chelsea clinched the Premier League Championship with a 1-0 win over West Bromwich Albion. This is their second Premier League Championship in three years, and it's been a wild ride for Chelsea fans. 2015, they won the Premier League Championship. 2016, they had the worst Premier League title defense in league history. And 2017, they're back on top as Premier League champions. After Chelsea clinched the Premier League title, Frank Lampard went on and said that Antonio Conte is going to build a great dynasty for Chelsea, and that's a hard point to argue. He's a great manager. Chelsea's a great club with a lot of money. They're going to be able to afford good players, so don't think that their title defense next year is going to be like the one they had last year. Wednesday night, the Pittsburgh Penguins eliminated the Washington Caps from the playoffs with a 2-0 victory, and I think that could potentially be the last time we not only see Alexander Ovechkin in a Washington Capitals jersey, but in an NHL jersey. I think there's a very high chance he ends up in the KHL next season for multiple reasons. In the past, Ovechkin has said that he's wanted to play in the KHL, and it makes even more sense for him now. With the NHL not going to the Olympics this year and Ovechkin wanting to and having to deal with the potential repercussions, he could just retire from the NHL, go and play in the KHL, which will allow him to go play at the Olympics for Russia. The rematch has been set between Daniel Cormier and John Jones for UFC 214 July 29th. This is going to be a great fight. I think these guys genuinely hate each other. John Jones has been away from the sport for a while. This is going to be his first fight back since his suspension last year for performance enhancing drugs. I'm sure most of you know this already, but Lonzo Ball has officially launched his own sneakers. He's launching the Zoe 2 Prime, the Zoe 2 Wet, and the Zoe 2 Slides. The Zoe 2 Prime and the Zoe 2 Wet are the exact same shoe. The Zoe 2 Prime is going to set you back $495, and the Zoe 2 Wet is going to set you back $995. The Wet is a signed version of the Zoe 2 Prime, and it comes in a glass case for you. 
And of course, the Zotu slides are essentially the Lonzo Ball flip-flops, and those are going to set you back around $220. Now, this price tag may seem really high to most people, and it is. $500 for a pair of sneakers is a lot. LeVar Ball himself came out and said, if you can't afford the Zotu Primes, you're not a big baller. A lot of people were not happy with the announcement of the Zotu Prime. Between the $500 price tag and LeVar Ball saying, if you can't afford a $500 pair of sneakers, you're not a big baller, no one was happy. But there's one thing people aren't considering. They aren't targeting the same market as Nike, Jordan, Adidas. They're targeting a new market. Slam Magazine reports that. Big Baller Brand is aiming for Lonzo's signature sneaker to tap into a new market. Above the athletic performance kicks from the likes of Nike, Jordan, Adidas, and Under Armour. But below the high-end designer shoes of Gucci, Prada, or Louis Vuitton. This means that the Zo2 Prime aren't a typical sneaker. They're going for almost a luxury basketball shoe market. This entire situation is fascinating to me. Not only that Lonzo Ball is dropping his own pair of sneakers on his own brand before he even plays a minute in the NBA, but just everyone's reaction to this. No one is happy. People are making fun of LeVar Ball. But whether LeVar Ball knows it or not, he's smarter than people think because he's generating so much publicity for his shoes. Everyone knows about these shoes and he hasn't had to pay for any advertising for them. It's all been organic. So many people covering it just based off the price tag. Now I do agree that it is a big swing for his first shoe to charge $500. It would have made more sense to me to drop a line of shoes competing with Jordan, Nike, Adidas, and then go with a bigger swing for this brand new luxury basketball shoe market. But it's interesting to see, and I think it's changed the sports landscape forever. I'm interested to see how this plays out. Are players coming out of college now gonna stick with the big brands and go work with Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour? Or are they gonna follow Lonzo Ball and start coming out with their own brands and their own shoes? I think this could affect the entire dynamic of sports business as we know it, with players coming out with their own brands now and working on their own. I'm also interested to see how the impact the other brothers' playing careers have on the big baller brand. The big thing with this company right now is that it's the three brothers, the balls, they're big ballers, they're all gonna be stars in the NBA, but what if they aren't? What if Jello and Mello don't make it and Lonzo Ball is the only one? They're no longer big ballers, they're big ball. And I'm just interested to see how that works because a lot of this is riding on these three brothers making it and being super successful and the best in the NBA. Thank you for tuning in to my first video back on YouTube with this entirely new format. I know it was a little rough. It's going to be a learning process for me. They're going to get better as I go. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you let me know down in the comments section what you think of Lonzo Ball shoes. And if you could afford them, would you buy them? Thank you once again. Make sure you like, share, subscribe.